Welcome to the podcast, Life After Addiction and Indictment. I'm your host, Steve Cloward, and I spent most of the last decade and well over $100,000 on coaches, consultants, masterminds, and events trying to figure out how to reclaim my life again. On this podcast, I'm going to share the tools, the tips, the tricks, and the hacks that allowed me to forgive myself so that I could reclaim my life again. I'll be interviewing experts in mindset, leadership, entrepreneurship, sales, marketing, branding, and so much more. I'm glad you're here. Sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Let's go. This is life after addiction and indictment. I hope that uh, the sound isn't too poor on this episode. If it's not so great, I apologize in advance and hope you'll still hang in there and bear with me. I replaced uh, my MacBook the other day. And this new one does not have a USB port for the different microphones that I use. And so I had ordered an adapter yesterday. It came today and it does not work, but I wanted to get this episode out. And so here we are. I want to start out real quick by talking about something I did in the past. Um, not so much about uh, what this podcast episode is going to be on, even though there was a lot of things business you know, entrepreneurial related. Um, I, I did a foundation back in 2004 called Bands for Freedom Foundation. And with everything that's going on in the world today and with what's taken place, uh, I'm not going to get into all that because I do talk about that on episodes in this podcast. But most of that conversation is over on my other podcast, Truth Talk with Steve, which you're, you know, you can find it on Apple and other platforms, but your best place is to go onto Rumble dot com forward slash truth talk with Steve, or you can just go to rumble.com and search truth talk with Steve. Um, but anyway, the reason I bring that up is because I did bands for freedom at a time where, you know, we were at war. I mean, basically we've been at war forever um, in this country. And the things that I've learned about that is pretty sad, uh, but that's neither here nor there for this topic today. Uh, because of that, I just felt like you know, we need to raise the awareness of the American people of the sacrifices the men, women, and uniform and their families make on our behalf to protect the freedoms that we have. Um, and I had a, a simple silicone rubber wristband that maybe you can see right there that says freedom. Okay. I still wear it today. This is over uh, 18 years ago. Um, and off selling that wristband at a dollar pop, just over a year's time, we were able to donate 255,000 to the Armed Forces Relief Trust. And like I said, the reason was to raise awareness of the American people because we have military men and women, past and present, and their families who suffer incredibly. And it was a phenomenal experience. And so as I've seen what's going on and I've gotten really involved in, in learning and doing a lot of research and digging in to see what's really truly going on, what our true history is. It's been hidden from us and, and it's really sad, um, but it's starting to be exposed and I, we're starting to see it. Even mainstream media is finally starting to talk about certain things. Um, but I bring this up because I just felt pulled to get in what I call the fight. You know, I'm a patriot. I, I'm grateful for the freedoms we have in America. I'm grateful for our founding fathers but unfortunately, there is an evil deep state. There is a cabal. There's a worldwide situation, folks. And they have been ruling and reigning over us forever and enslaving us. And because of what took place on January 6th, uh, there are a lot of people who were simply just patriots. They didn't do anything violent. They were singled out uh, because of their beliefs. And most of them are fraudulently charged and put in prison still to this day, many, many are in prison. So I've just been thinking of what could I do? What could I do to help? And I just decided screw it. I'm gonna create something that we can sell that we can donate a bunch of the funds to help the J6 prisoners pay for private and guest investigator fees as well as legal fees uh, or even just help the families, whatever something that impacts those people, those patriots and their families. And 
I've got a good buddy, David Summerall, who has StopHate.com. If you're not familiar with that, go check it out. He's done some phenomenal interviews and dug deep into the J6 situation. That's also being exposed for what it was, folks. We know it was not an insurrection. It was 100% you know, a coup to take over, to create that atmosphere. There was tons of FBI infiltrators. That has come out. We know that. So that they could attack Trump again. You know. Anyways. So I created what's called official freedom gear. Literally, the site just went live today, and that is the URL, officialfreedomgear.com. Um, I don't have a bunch here, and I'm not gonna like do a share screen, even though I could. You can go to the URL, but you know, here's one of the items that's you know just a cool, it's a hoodie, black on black, that uh, you know just says freedom. So all of all of the swag, basically all the t-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve tanks hoodies, uh, lots of other things are gonna be added. A huge portion of the proceeds, uh, we're just basically gonna cover costs and then I'll be donating. That information will be available on Truth Talk with Steve podcast or truthtalkwithsteve.com. But please, if you're a patriot, if you are grateful for the freedoms you have, if you wanna stand for freedom to show that you're willing to stand for freedom and not afraid of what maybe somebody down the street or in the store or even a family member might say, go to officialfreedomgear.com and check out some of the items and get you some official freedom gear. It will serve a great purpose. And you can, like I said, you can stand up and show that you're proud for your uh, of freedom, or proud to be an American, proud to be a patriot. It's time, folks, we stand up. Before we lose this country and uh anyway that's where i'm going to leave that you can see on the website on the about page the bottom it talks a little bit about bands for freedom has a couple of pictures from my old website of all the country music stars that supported us in fact it's only one page i had four pages of country stars and other folks uh that supported it as well as one of the check donations that i made and it's a hundred thousand dollar check donated once um, and like I said, we donated 255,000. My goal is to surpass that amount in donations to help J6 prisoners and their families. So I would be grateful for any help that you can give. And I will document just like I did with Bands for Freedom, uh, be very transparent so people can see when we give money away, uh, because that is the reason. This is not an entrepreneurial adventure, even though it will apply to this podcast because it's no different than starting any other business. You know, you have to come up with an idea and then you have to execute. The best way to come up with an idea, you know, something that will be successful is find a problem and solve that problem. That is the number one formula for a successful venture as an entrepreneur. So I know there's a lot of patriots out there at this time in America, and frankly in the world, with all the crap that's being exposed and the truth finally coming out about how pathetic and evil this world is and how it's <laughs> enslaved us and infiltrated every area of society. Not only government, schools, politicians, you know, attorney generals, you name it. And it's even churches, it's quite sad. Uh, but like I said, I felt pulled for well over a year before I started that other podcast uh, back in October of 2021, the Truth Talk with Steve podcast. Because I just, you know, when you can find something that you're passionate about, you can actually go and create that and you don't feel like you're working. Okay. Truth Talk with Steve does not generate me really any income, very little. I have some affiliate show sponsors, et cetera. But frankly, I'm just building that audience right now. You know, I haven't even really put it out there, but that's what I'm starting to do um, to build that audience. And then once I do, then obviously by just showing the different offers that are things that your audience would want, you can make income right off those affiliate offers. So that's just really 
the great recipe for success. Find a need and fill it. And if you're passionate about it, that is a gold home run because then you love what you do. I'm doing it, this official freedom gear for free. I'm giving my time and energy to do it. A little bit of money up front, to get the, you know, the website built out and all that. Um, but after that, it's just going to be time and a few resources, people that will help with some different designs, things like that. But, you know, I don't plan to make any money off it. As long as I cover the costs, that's, that's the key. Um, but if that wasn't my mission and it was 100% a for-profit focused business, it would be awesome. It's a great time for that kind of a focus. So that's not what this episode is about, but it just happened to go there because I wanted to bring up official freedom gear to get the word out. So if you like what you see, not only purchase something, but tell others, I would really appreciate it. Share this episode. I'm just looking at a couple of notes I made today because one of my other businesses has some stuff going on that has really brought my attention to a couple of things that are very important in business. And I've been hit square in the face with them today. And, you know, the first thing I noted was I wanted to know kind of what had happened because of the way somebody has acted. I, I have a business where I just have affiliates. They sell through my business, different services, um, whether it be solar, TV, internet, home security, um, whatever. Anything really home service, they can sell through us. And we take care of all the back end operations and everything. And we're the ones approved and they get a commission for just selling. It's simple for them. And it's something that me and my boys, my boys are great at the ops on the backside. And so that's what we do. Um, and we had a new affiliate come on two days ago and I was partnered, so to speak, with another dealer that did something similar four years ago. Um, and we were partners 50-50 verbally. This, their office was out of Atlanta where he lived. And I would fly down there a couple times a month, but I would still work out of my office up here in Utah, even when I wasn't down there, obviously it was a full-time deal. And I dealt with a lot of the operational stuff, most of the financial stuff and the pay commissions to the affiliates. Well, I'm not going to get into details of how that guy operated and, and all that, but I am going to hit on one topic before I get to this other one. And that is my dad told me, uh, you know, as I got older in my early twenties, probably late, not late teens, probably to early twenties, when I took over running his car, his full service car wash, I probably mentioned on past episodes, he was, he's a dentist, but he was a phenomenal entrepreneur as far as real estate developing. And then he built this full service car wash thing. It'd be this great place for his, you know, young kids at the time that were, I was a sophomore in high school when it opened, kind of be this little family farm where we could all work as we grew up and went through college to figure out what we wanted to do. And, I, and it was a huge benefit, but he had partners early on on some decent real estate deals. But he told me, Steve, have partners when they bring something to the business or the investment, whatever it is, whatever project it is, you know, whatever venture it is that you need. So early on, he needed additional financial help. So he had a great partner um, that was an orthodontist and they built a big project in Provo, a big office complex and did a lot of other great projects. Um, but as they both did well and stuff. They still remain great friends. Well, they did until the one, the orthodontist actually died. It's, it was a sad story, but in the plane crash was wife and two of their five kids. But um, he said, once you don't need a partner, why have a partner? Because it can create problems, number one. And as much as we wanna talk about it, there are some great partnerships and I've had one or two decent ones but I've had two horrific ones. And one was with this dealer down in Atlanta. I even spent, you know, like 
2200 bucks on a partnership agreement, buy sell agreement, the whole nine yards my attorney put together. And he, he agreed with it and stuff, but he never, never signed it and sent it back within like a week. Well, I started at that point seeing some red flags, but I'm going to be totally transparent here. I was in a situation financially where being in a partnership till I really figured out what I wanted to do was the best thing at that time because of the salary I was getting. And then obviously profits based on how the business was doing, but I started to see some red flags. It operated not like we were partners because when it came down to it, he did what he wanted. No matter what we talked about, no matter what I said, even if he would have signed that agreement, I believe it still would have remained that way unless I really pushed hard because the agreement would have outlined everything, the relationships, who does what, everything, which is incredibly important, by the way. If you're going to be in partnerships, make sure you do that. Because agreements eliminate expectations. So when somebody thinks something should be different, brings it up, you can refer to the agreement. But it helps eliminate that most of the time. So he didn't sign it. I, could, I then decided to just let it go and just honestly take advantage of the income I was getting, do my job, you know, act, act as a partner the best I could. But the biggest mistake of going into a partnership is if you go into a partnership with somebody that's already operating a business and they were either the huge majority partner with maybe a very small silent partner because I've had it twice in the last four years where I was a 50-50 partner with existing businesses. It will never work, folks. Never. And that's because there are it's their business. Whether it's just subconscious even or not, that's just the fact. And I'm not blaming them, either one of them. I get it. I would probably operate the same way, even though I know better. It would just be natural, but it's not right based on the agreement. So be very careful in fact, never go into partnership with someone that is already operating and making decisions, especially when you see how they're paying certain affiliates and <laughs> they're paying out more than you're making, but your partner justifies it and said, well, if those accounts charge back, it doesn't charge back the volume bonus that we weren't even qualified for yet, but we would get. Uh, so we would go negative at that point, but they don't charge back for the volume bonus. So it'd break even. But once that volume bonus did kick in, we'd be making the profit of the volume bonus when those accounts charge back. So you're losing all the other income on the 15 or 20, per, or excuse me, the you know 80 to 85% that didn't charge back at that time. How stupid is that? Anyway, that's a whole nother topic. So just don't do it. But if you need a partner to start a new business and there's synergistic traits that really help make it happen, I'm not opposed to that at all. In fact, go for it. But just make sure you have an agreement in place. Everything, a buy-sell. If one of you wants to bail, bail out for whatever reason, it's in writing of how that works. You know, if there's death, you know, do you have life insurance? policy on each other. You got to take into account all those things. So don't just do it willy-nilly, get online and use some sort of boilerplate agreement. Take the time, spend a few extra bucks, you know, even if it's a stretch at the time to get an attorney, you know, you could probably get it done pretty cheap, you know, to start out, you know, just six, 800 bucks, maybe. Anyway, so the situation that happened goes full circle back to that old relationship. So we had a new sales rep reach out and reminded me, I didn't know who it was, reminded me that he had worked with us when I was with that other company in Atlanta. And he sure said all the right things, 
I vaguely remembered him after he mentioned it. And I do recall him claiming that he had some charge back that the old partner hadn't paid him on. And I went to bat for him and I ended up belling like three weeks later and nothing came of it. So the other guy didn't do anything, you know, and I know how he dealt with things as well as one other guy that was in management. Um, they didn't care about the people. I can tell you now, everybody I have working for me right now, they're all subcontractors. They all have their own businesses. They just facilitate their sales through us. They are all loyal because I'm loyal to them and they know how much I appreciate them. Not only because I say it, but how I treat them. In fact, I know that I overpay commission on sales compared to most people out there, probably compared to everybody out there in this industry. And sometimes it's actually uh, ends up as a win-lose, lose for me. And that's no way to do business either. I've gotten to the point where I focus on that to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, but it can happen based on certain arrangements. My company, we're doing the lead gen because we do offer that to some of them. And if their numbers aren't hitting good or you have a bad you know, chunk of leads for a while or if lead costs go up like they have lately, your metrics can move and their commission is set based on me knowing my KPIs, my key performance indicators of what's my average cost per sale and then based on the install percentage of these various services we offer, you know, 80% on some, um, 88 on others, then I know what my cost per acquisition or cost per install for service is. That's how I've based what I pay in commission to tell me what my average profit, my gross profit per install is. When those numbers get out of whack and the cost per install goes above that mark that I've got, which is $50, then it starts to take money out of my profit, which affects my ability to operate my business and or pay myself. And that's part of being an entrepreneur. But you have to be willing to always evolve, always to stay on top of your KPIs, that is critical. You know, I've been very blessed at times, you know, in my old business appraisal firm, I did not track KPIs. All I did is I generated all the business, had a bunch of appraisers that did it, paid them. I didn't track if the lender or broker or bank paid us. I assumed we get paid most of the time, which most of the time we did. But when we didn't, I never tracked that and charged back the commission I paid to the appraiser. That was a huge mistake because when things hit the fan, I crashed and burned, ended up getting indicted and going to federal prison. I was broke. Knowing that number and having that would have been huge, made a huge difference for my family. So I'm very anal about tracking my KPIs. So what happens? This guy calls, we onboard him, says all the right things. Uh, didn't do any sales yesterday. We anticipated start today. My oldest son is really the one that deals with all the systems, the portals where we process accounts, various different uh, providers, et cetera. And he's uh, been frustrated in this industry because there's so much crap that goes on. And it's really, it's stung us a few times hard, especially in the last year. So He's really on top of that stuff. He watches who's processing what. Well, we do not focus on, and frankly, we don't even put in our affiliate agreements compensation for selling mobile phone. And it pays okay. I think it pays 200 bucks a line uh, for AT&T mobile. And he comes back from lunch and he checks in one of the portals, the system, and sees there's 24 mobile lines ran. Man, so he called me. I was actually out of the office until about two o'clock today. And he says, oh man, we got a problem. He tells me and I said, hey, all right, call in, get on it ASAP. I'm gonna call DSI, you call AT&T. We got to cancel all those orders because what happens 
from what I've been told, I've never had this issue because we, like I said, we've never sold mobile. Uh, but being in the industry, I've heard that they'll process mobile deals for brand new iPhone 13s is what these 24 accounts were. And then evidently, it's weird because I still don't understand 100%. I'll tell you what I understand or believe, uh, but I don't know this is 100% accurate. They uh, run the orders. I would think it would be like, you know, five or six lines and you'd ship the phones to one address. Well, evidently it was 24 different names, 24 different account numbers, 24 different addresses. Because the scam goes that those then get shipped and they have somebody, and it could be even the customer that they probably are using old data that they have, which is totally illegal, which means they had, would have kept like date of birth and social or they could have actually sold them and then called and told the customer, oh, the plan is this or that, and it's going to be this much, and you know, say lie about some price so that they want to cancel. And then they say, regardless of what the situation was, because I don't know for sure, but I just know it's 24 different ones, which makes it harder because you have to have, in a sense, 24 co-conspirators, in a sense. That's not 100% true because it truly could be the real person's name and address. But then they call them and tell them there's some problem. Uh, the phones are shipped, but you know, don't open the box. You're going to get a return label sent to you. And in fact, FedEx is going to come and pick it up. And then whatever they've told FedEx to then return the phone that on that return label is evidently to these people involved in this scam, whatever it is. And then they have the phones and they go and sell the phones for whatever. Say it's, you know, iPhone 13 is what, they're probably 12, 1400 bucks. And so they might sell them for eight or nine, who knows, some discounted price. That's what was taking place. Like I didn't even try to, at that point, I didn't even reach out to the rep to try to figure it out. I knew because we don't sell mobile and we never gave him commission for mobile lines. And then I remembered he kept asking me for the logins to this one platform. And I said, I don't do that. That's my son handles that. Until you get on the Zoom and do the onboarding call for an hour that goes over all that stuff, gets your logins, that's when that'll happen. So as I was dealing with this earlier today, I, I remembered that. And I was like, that should have been a red flag because he pushed me like three times about it. And it's like he never was listening to what I was telling him. So... That's what was important. He wanted those logins to do this scam. So there's a lot of lessons here. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm grateful we have the SOPs, standard operating procedures in place that my son is on top of that stuff. So we caught it. This could terminate us, you know, if we didn't catch it. Because we were so all over this for like two hours and others got involved. Uh, and there's tons of documentation that I've created by the interactions, text, emails, um, that definitely shows we were on top of this. And the minute we saw it, you know, we were all over it. But you must know who you're dealing with. I have to own this, and I don't like to, but I have to take ownership of the fact that I really didn't vet him because I didn't really know him when we were at that other partners at that other dealership. He said enough things that I did remember him kind of bitching and moaning to me about some pay that he was owed for chargebacks or something or hold back pay or something like that. But I didn't remember him. Um, you know, he, he had a business entity and that was it. So I called the number that he provided today. Um, once I had engaged people and knew that the ball was rolling. Uh, but because until then, that's the priority. You know, if something comes up, a fire comes up in business, you've got to evaluate the urgency behind it so that you can prioritize if everything else goes on the side burner, including if you get a call from your wife, you know, unless it's an emergency of a family member or something like that, this is going to take priority. Um, once we had the ball rolling, we knew we had people engaged because all we needed to do is get freaking the damn orders canceled before they shipped out the phones would have been done. This company's got their head so far up their ass 
such a giant company that in fact, I shouldn't be doing business with them because of the beliefs I have of what's going on in the world, because they're part of the corporate cabal, one of them. And we got to quit supporting these companies. So know who you're working with. And if you don't, for sure, ask more questions, get some references. I took it for granted. He gave us legit information as far as we require the driver's license, copy of social number. We don't require the actual card. Um, you know, all US information seemed legit, but we got scammed, you know? And the reason I'm not beating myself up too bad is because as the day progressed about an hour ago. It's about 6 p.m. right now on, on that Thursday, the 24th of March. I sent an email to that email, which I did early, right when it happens. I said, hey, I'm going to talk to you ASAP. And of course, never heard anything. So I thought, it'll blow me off. I tried that number later. It basically was a non-working number at this point. So I sent him an email. And of course, at first, I was being a total dick. But I was like, no, nah, it's really not what I want to say. I just want to let him know that, hey, you're not hurting me. Karma is a bitch, and she will come and find you eventually. And said, just want you to know, everybody's in the loop on this. FBI's even notif notified, and whoever those phones are going to, they're going to be contacted, and if they return those phones, per whatever you or your people tell them, they will then potentially be co-conspirators. Of course, I was trying to put the heat on to intimidate him a little, because it is true. Um, but he responded to that email and flat out told me, you're right, karma is a bitch. This is for Aaron screwing. I shouldn't have said his name, but most people will have, don't put it together. This is for getting screwed by you and your partner. Well, he didn't understand the partnership and how it worked and what was going on, because I was going to bat and I did you know, get him some of that uh, income he claimed was owed to him. So it is what it is. You know, I don't waste my time getting all worked up because that doesn't benefit me at all. That will never serve me. I used to do that. In fact, my son, you know, I heard him say he kind of got a pit in the stomach when he saw this and blah, blah, blah. I get that. But that doesn't serve him. And I'm not calling him out on it because, you know, he's 24 years younger than I am. And I probably only figured this out the last four or five years. You know, I was a very emotional guy. I still am, but I don't, you know, I've learned about the mind and the mindset. I don't let the stories take off and trip me out. You know, it just isn't going to help. So I just don't worry about it. Um, but I take action and do what I can control. You know, all we can do is control what we can control. The other stuff isn't going to serve me. It's going to create actually negativity, negative energy that's going to end up having a negative effect. So when you do what you can control and you know you've done your part, that has to be good enough at that point. And then at that point where the chips fall, they fall. So no sense in creating a bunch of stress over something that you've done your part. And if, if the chips fall in an area that sucks, guess what? You just pick up and move on. Because an entrepreneur, you can never, ever, ever give up. You know, I, I don't know the exact number of years these days, but they say you know businesses fell in the first five years, the first eight, whatever it is. There's a lot of reasons to it. But a lot of times it's because they give up. You know, you have some adversity, even though you've gotten by and, you know, been able to make a wage or whatever. Because if you've lasted five years, you've gotten by and made some money because I'm sure most entrepreneurs did not have five years of savings sitting there to burn. It's not the way it works. So why give up? Now, it's something you're not passionate about and you're, you know, you just can't get into and it's just a means to an end to make money. 
And I get that, but you got to have an answer. And would you feel the way you feel in that business if it was doing well? Because I know how that works. As much as that's not supposed to be how it is, I know that's how it is. When the cash flow is rough or non existent for a period, it's very hard to dig in and be excited to go to work, whether you're passionate about what you do or not. But if that money is flowing and relieves all that stress in life, life's a lot easier. Once again, that's not how it's supposed to be. But that's reality. And that comes back to all the other stuff that I talk about on my pod, other podcast because of how we're enslaved and interest and all the BS that we pay on to continue to feed the evil machine. Go learn about that stuff on the other podcast. I'm starting to talk a lot about that. But don't give up. And do not, as much as we like to, and as much as I used to, I used to be that guy who would go sue somebody based on principle because I could afford to, both financially and time-wise. But unless it's something major, that is such a waste of time and money because of the energy that shifts you to when you're dealing with it. This kid, I don't know how old he is. I'm guessing he's in his 30s, most likely. Must have had this on his mind for a long time. And somehow found easily, I guess, social media, my email address, and reached out to me. Said all the right things. And I get on a phone call with everybody and I make my decision based on my gut. Even my son told me yesterday after he had done the Zoom training the day before, this guy's solid, man. I think this guy's going to do some serious good business, you know, and some decent volume. But he's played, he's been in the game long enough. He knows how to play it. But see, he has obviously let this consume him for some time to come out and intentionally do this. And because I know it's that doesn't serve him and karma is a bitch. She's coming. I don't know when, but she always comes. So I don't have to worry about him. I don't have to try to go get even. You know, he'll get what he, he'll get what's coming when it's time. So I hope that there's been some value in this. Like I say, know who you're working with. Partner only when it's necessary. Because not only can things go a little sideways, but relationships are more important than partnerships and making money. There's nothing wrong with them. If you go into them the right way, know it's, what's up and there's really value that each other brings and you'll have a clear understanding of how you're going to operate and that you are a team. And doing that successfully has to be with people who are willing to let their pride set aside and truly do its best interest of the business. And being willing to admit when you've made a mistake, be willing to admit when you're wrong. That's how you continue to make it work. So that's the end of the episode today, folks. I appreciate your time. Um, if there are any you know, specific things that you'd like me to talk about, whether it's experience in prison, whether it's experience in business, you know, what it takes to do a nonprofit, you know, the uh reporting that's required and, and all those different things, you know, if you have interest in any of those things or anything else, period, you know, shoot me a message. You can reach me through messenger. You find me on Facebook. Uh, the links for that is always in the description below the video. Um, so you can reach out to me there and get to my websites, uh, reach out to me through those, you know, or shoot me a text message. And like I say, messenger is the best spot. Not going to drop my phone number here, but um, anyway, I'm easy to easy to get a hold of. And if you if you know somebody that's struggling, because life's tough, and it's going to get a lot tougher, I believe. 
So there's a whole hell of a lot of abuse of opiates and addiction going on. Because you've heard in a few episodes before this, the fentanyl deaths are over 100,000 last year. That's just the fentanyl. It doesn't include all their opiates or alcohol, domestic abuse, all the other things. We are, I believe, at a time in American history that's going to be very rough. I'm talking food shortages. In fact, there's a clip I saw earlier today. Biden flat out said it when he was given some, you know, whatever it was, news conference or speech or whatever. There's going to be food shortages. The signs are already out there. There's things going on with the banking system. If you have a bunch of money, you better get it the hell out of the banks. Where do you put it? And I'd get it out of the stock market too. I'd be getting gold and silver, folks. If uh, you don't have a source for that, reach out to Dr. Kirk Elliott. In fact, if you, if you, he's a phenomenal guy. He knows the stuff inside and out. Um, but he also is the best guy to buy through because if you get in a pinch ever and need to sell it, you're not taking that hit of like the $5 over spot that everybody's charging, even a little more some places these days. So if, if silver's 25 bucks, which I think was like 25, 31 yesterday, you know, you're going to pay like 30, 25 or 30, 50 at least to go buy an ounce of silver. If you had to go sell that, and say silver didn't move, which I think it's going to pop good here in, in the next little while, maybe a year, maybe two. But I think that's a very good investment, but it's a very safe place to put your money. But if you had to sell back and say it hadn't moved, you're going to be able to sell back to them without eating, you know, that $5 spot because the spot's not going to be five. Um, but he does things a little bit different. So talk to him, go, go have a consult and to, to find him. I don't have it with me here and it's not on um, I'll put it in the notes, actually. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, or you can go over to Truth Talk with Steve and go on to, I think it's the sponsors page, and you'll see his information. And you can just click on the image there and it'll take you to a landing page where you can contact him. And he's a great guy, no charge to talk to you at all. And honestly, there's also a link to my Patriot Supply. If, if you do not have any food storage, you've got to get some. And you've got to get a whole bunch of bottled waters, you know, or if you've got a 55 gallon drum, you can get and put water in there and, and put a, the stuff that you need to, that you can just get on Amazon, you know, how to preserve that water. Um, go get some of that. I can't think of what that's called, but just a little bottle with half a bottle you put in there, it'll take care of it. Uh, but be prepared folks. Don't be that guy where when all hell breaks loose and you can't find stuff on the shelves, or God forbid they lock us totally down as they try to usher in their great reset. Agenda 2030. Don't be that guy that doesn't have something to feed your family and have to rely on someone else. So I'll put the link for that as well to go to my Patriot supply, but the link is, you know, the URL is getpreparedwithsteve.com. So go check that out. If you've got money and you want to get get it in a safe place. Like I say, silver and gold is your best spot. Um, and, uh, and please, you know, let's support and help these J6 prisoners. That's officialfreedomgear.com. Hope you all have a fantastic evening. This is Monday today when this is dropping and a great week ahead. Stay safe, never give up, and pay attention to your attitude and your thoughts. You can control those. You can control your life and create anything that you want to. Until next time, take care.